Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you're not familiar, this channel has always looked at a myriad of distributions of Linux, Linux-based operating systems. Now, there are a lot of them out there. Choice is one of the great luxuries that a lot of us enjoy in the free and open source world. However, it's also probably our biggest curse. So what I want to do today is I want to break down why it is impossible for us to have the perfect Linux desktop distribution. And now that might sound like a bummer, but actually it's because I think there are 12 pillars of what makes an operating system great. And really at the end of the day, you're gonna try and prioritize those 12 pillars of an OS differently to come up with a different product to suit different people. So drop a like on the video and uh, let me know at the end of this video, in what order you would prioritize these 12 pillars going to take me a little bit of time to unpack it so bear with me but if you are new around here then definitely consider subscribing as I love talking about Linux open source alternatives and other alternatives in the tech world to help your tech work better for you let's get into it before we get going on today's video a quick word from our sponsor Skillshare if you're not familiar, Skillshare is an online learning community and they've got thousands, literally thousands of inspiring classes for creative people, curious people, or just lifelong learners. You can explore new skills or deepen existing passions you might have, or just get lost in a new creative pursuit. Uh, whether that's uh, UI, UX design, web development, photography, video production, you name it, there's probably a course on Skillshare led by an industry professional that you can get involved in. So uh, one of the courses that I've been getting a lot of value from as a teacher by day and a occasional YouTuber by night is the YouTube success course led by Marquez Brownlee. Uh, the particular section that uh, really stood out to me this time around was the section on scripting and the value of that and emphasizing certain things in your videos. Something st I've still got a lot of work to do on, but Skillshare is a great place to get me started on something like that. So if there is a pursuit that you wanna get involved in, then definitely head down to the description box below because the first 1000 people that click on the link in the description box below will get a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. No ads, unlimited access to premium courses that are consistently getting updated with new and original content. So definitely go to the link in the description, check it out. And thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's episode. Okay, so these 12 pillars are very broad and I don't claim to know everything about each of these areas, but with a, about a decade or so footling around in some capacity or other with Linux based operating systems, I've seen quite a few Linux distros come and go. And this is some, I guess, some common baskets or some common playgrounds that we can see different projects prioritizing some of these areas of an operating system to suit their different users. So if you are a developer of a Linux project, let me know down in the comments, like what you prioritize out of some of these pillars and we'll see where we land as well. That would be an interesting discussion. Okay, so the first pillar of an OS is the design. The design involves both the user interface and the user experience. Those are two different things. User interface talks about the visual look of an operating system. So think about the new design that we see in Windows 11 or the, the visual updates they did to Mac OS Big Sur or the theming in Ubuntu, the Yaru theming. That's all user interface uh, design. User experience design is something a little bit more under the hood in that it's how an operating system works. It could be described as the workflow or where users are expected to click on things and find things and discoverability and all of that stuff. I'm not a graphic designer. I'm not a user interface or experience architect. So I don't really know what I'm talking about in those areas, but you better believe that design is a huge part of operating systems, both the way it looks and the way it functions. In the Linux world, we could think of all of the different desktop shells that are out there. Think of elementary OS's Pantheon shell, or maybe GNOME 40, or maybe the KDE Plasma desktop. All of these are expressions of design. Okay, second pillar, security. How secure is the operating system and what priority is placed on security above everything else? How strict are the firewall policies out of the box? How does the operating system handle interaction with software? Is it sandboxed? Is it allowed to access the root level? I really hope not. But the way that an operating system positions itself will depend on how it handles security. 
everything from firmware management to how it interacts with other devices on a network, all of these things could fall under the security banner. Chances are Linux distributions that focus on anonymity or even network penetration testing are going to value security higher than your standard Ubuntu, for example. All right, third pillar, app availability. This is an interesting one in that I think it's one that's very important to a lot of people. How easy is it to both discover and install the applications, computer programs that you need to do the things that you do? As an example, uh, distributions like Zorin OS will go out of their way to make it easy for you to access as much software as possible. You could kind of also lump in a fourth pillar here of compatibility. Now I'm talking specifically about software compatibility. And this is about how many software libraries and how much computer software is open and available and able to run on your operating system. Windows is a interesting example of software compatibility because they try to support software that goes back decades at this point. Whereas other uh, Linux distributions and even Mac OS is a lot more draconian with which software it supports and for how long. So if you can find a Linux distribution that supports a vast array of software, whether that is from centralized software repositories like Snapcraft or Flathub, or whether it's from a more traditional package management systems like Debian, RPM, or even the AUR updates, fifth pillar I think we're up to. So updates are very important, obviously for a bunch of reasons. There's kind of, these kind of break into three different categories. You have bug fix updates, which are just there to solve problems that crop up in the software. You also have security updates that are there to patch, patch vulnerabilities that get discovered. And you also have feature updates, which add new and exciting stuff to your system. Now, depending again on what kind of audience a particular open source Linux distribution is shooting for, it might prioritize having bleeding edge updates available for its system for both security features and bug fixes. Some more stable operating systems might dial back the updates that are available for new features, but will still hold on to the security updates that trickle through, obviously for security reasons. Now on the bleeding edge, you have your distributions like Arch Linux, OpenSUSE, Tumbleweed. These guys live on the edge and, uh, and depending on who you pick there, there's different quality assurance testing that goes into those updates, but you still get them pretty soon after they're made available. On the flip side, you have distributions like Debian, which take things a lot slower and have very rigid quality assurance testing but it also means that you're not gonna get the latest and greatest stuff as soon as it's available, but you better believe it's gonna be pretty great once it gets to you. All right, number six, customization. Depending on who you are and what audience you're going for, some will try to give an operating system that allows users to customize the interface infinitely and uh, will give them amazing opportunities to express their own personality and put things where they want to and add all kinds of crap all over their computer and more power to you. Others will prefer to give a much more refined, nuanced, locked down experience that the user is just expected to show up, understand what's going on and use without changing much. As time goes on, we're seeing players like Windows 11 and Mac OS go down the locked down route in that computers are becoming more like appliances that we just show up and are expected to know how to use them versus uh, tools that we can uh, customize to our, the nth degree of how we work. One of the things that I appreciate about Linux is being able to change things to how I work. Having said that, I do really appreciate the projects that take the time to curate an experience and present it to you, but allow you a little bit of flexibility to be able to dial in the settings and everything the exact way you want it. And I think desktop environments like KDE Plasma on KDE Neon allow a really great balance of customization, but also a pretty good user experience out of the box. Pillar number seven, hardware support. Some distributions will go out of their way to support the latest and greatest hardware that's available. It's a massive pillar of an operating system to have intelligent tools to help detect what hardware you have running and what software you need to find 
and install to make it run really well. As a great example, Ubuntu has this interesting tool that in its installer will detect on certain pre-configured hardware setups and actually install a particular kernel or a particular set of uh, drivers if it detects certain configurations in the, during the installer. Uh, so while this doesn't apply to everyone, there's definitely a level of extra hardware compatibility that some open source projects will lend towards their operating system beyond the normal, it's supported in the Linux kernel, so it works, yay. Which by and large, it kind of does. Moral to the story, updates and hardware compatibility are often very closely tied. If you want the latest and greatest hardware, you're probably gonna have to go with the latest and greatest software. Number eight. Transparency. This one's an interesting one. It's kind of like privacy, but I've decided to call it transparency because I think it's important and different projects place this on different levels. It's important for the operating system to be able to inform the user of what's going on and give a level of transparency or exposure to what the system is doing at any given time. Things like where is the network traffic going? How much battery is being used on any given scenario, what software is running in the background, how much data will a particular update use. All of these things add a level of transparency to the user so that the user knows exactly what the computer is doing at any given time. Number nine, stability. This goes without saying, some distributions will value stability more than others. Notice stability is not the same as reliability. Stability is about having a base of an operating system that doesn't get updated, changed, or moved too often. The set of variables that creates the core computing experience stays the same over a long period of time. And usually you get significant warning if something's gonna change. Now this is compared to number 10, reliability, which is the lack of bugs and how uh, reliable the system is over time. How many crashes do you get? Uh, all of that stuff is all tied up in some of those other pillars like updates and uh, hardware support and all that fun stuff. But still, reliability and stability are very important things for a project to consider and their priorities around those will have run-on effects of some of the other pillars of an operating system. Okay, so we're down to the last two. Number 11, accessibility. This is an under the, this is a real under the radar one because it's wild how good some of the accessibility features are getting on some of the big name operating systems out there, Windows and Mac OS especially. Some Linux distributions do a great job of trying to champion accessibility features more than others. Definitely the GNOME project and Elementary are doing a pretty bang up job from what I can see to really surface some of those accessibility features, making computing uh, accessible for everyone regardless of ability and where a system chooses to prioritize accessibility is going to impact the final product and who ends up using that product. All right, so finally, number 12, the community. And it's fitting that this is kind of the last pillar that I deal with here today in that so many operating systems have passionate user bases behind them, passionate communities that help moderate the forums, help contribute to cleaning up the code, help write the documentation that goes into it, helps point new users where to go, um, helps run social media uh, platforms. All of these things are part of a community that underpins an operating system. And really it boils down to how much or how well does a Linux distro uh, promote or encourage a community to be built underneath it. And usually that'll speak volumes to the quality of the product itself. The more people that are attracted to use the product, the more they want to help out and give back to the community. It's one of the most amazing things about the free and open source world and Linux distributions as a whole. So those are my 12 pillars. Uh, yeah, let me know what order would you put them in? And, and I mean, I'll try and put them in what my priority list is and maybe that'll give you a bit of a feel for what I like about OS's and stuff. Yeah. So anyway, let me know what yours are. Hope you have a great one. See you in the next one.